Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Unity of Buffalo's Sunday, June 27th of 2021 online service. Now we will hear our opening song, Everything is New, by Daniel Namad. Bring it on. Everything new. Everything different. Everything true. I am ready for my next thing to do. Oh, I know it's going to be everything new. I'm through crying. I'm through waiting. I'm through hoping against all hope. something gone that'll never return think I finally learned to bring it on everything new everything different everything true I am ready for my next thing to do That the life I have is ever coming back But no more wishing On someone else's star That'll never be mine I think it's time to bring it on Everything new Everything and welcome to our Unity of Buffalo Sunday morning celebrations for June 27th. Everything's new, bring it on. We say, bring it on Buffalo Marathon, we've got Zoom. So we're celebrating the Buffalo Marathon by staying off the road this morning so that the runners can run and we can relax and enjoy our service with the use of technology. So it's my pleasure to platform this morning. My name is Mary Beth Wollenschlager, and it's my pleasure to platform and be part of our Sunday morning team as Reverend Mary is taking the weekend off. Please join me in opening prayer. I invite you to perhaps tap your heart or place your hand over your heart, 
focusing your attention on your heart and letting your breath get a little slower and a little deeper. And feeling that gratitude, feeling that gratitude of connection, that gratitude for technology. Sometimes we aren't grateful for technology, but technology is what's bringing us together on this beautiful, breezy, sunny Sunday Buffalo morning. So as we get centered, think of something we're grateful for. Let our body relax into that gratitude. I invite you to allow the words I speak to be those of your own heart. The Father and I are one and nothing disturbs the peace of my soul. I'm so grateful for this moment to prepare for our Sunday service, to feel the connection, the connection with one another, the connection with source energy, the connection with the sound of the breeze and the sunshine. We give thanks for Unity of Buffalo, our spiritual filling station, where we take this hour to renew, refresh, revitalize, and be made new. Everything is new. And we're ready to bring on the week. We're ready to bring on the service. And so it is. Amen. Now I invite you to please join me in affirming there is only one presence and one power living as the universe and as me, God, the good, omnipotent. And I invite you to hold our unity of Buffalo vision, a world of love, peace, and abundance for all. Our mission statement, Unity of Buffalo practices the presence of God through prayer, education, service, creativity, and community. And our core values, you can do the hand motions with me if you like to sort of embody these core values. So for loving, we give ourselves a hug and embrace the world. Spiritually centered, we can tap our heart. Inclusive, we hold our arms out to everyone. Respectful, namaste, and compassionate. From my heart to yours, I'm here to be of service. And now I invite Lynn Tranchill to read the daily word for us. Let go and let God. Lynn? So Sunday, June 27th, 2021. Let go, let God. I do what is mine to do and release the rest. I am equipped with powerful spiritual tools to use toward creating the life of my dreams through prayer and meditation, visualization and affirmation. I am willing to work for what I want to see manifest in my life and in the lives of those I care about. Sometimes I can be so focused on what I'm doing that I forget the importance of stepping back from my efforts and releasing my attachment to specific outcomes. There is great peace that comes from knowing I have done all I can do and then in perfect peace and clarity releasing outcomes to the divine that is in all people and circumstance. I need my, I heed my guidance to discern when to take action and when to yield to the activity of spirit. And from Matthew 33, but strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be given unto you. So repeat after me. I do what is mine to do and release the rest. So now it's my pleasure to introduce someone that needs really no introduction, Reverend Delora Olson. She's our guest speaker today. 
And we've been blessed by Reverend Delora's spiritual leadership as our senior minister for over 20 years now. Upon her retirement in 2000, she has continued to minister in so many ways, including being our minister emeriti, a prayer chaplain, and a trainer with our prayer chaplain program. And she has an active wedding ministry. So please join me in welcoming Reverend Alora. <laughs> I'd like to begin this lesson with a story, something we can all relate to. This is a story about loss and new beginnings. It's a story about a man named William Least Heat Moon, who lost both his marriage and his job as an English teacher at about the same time. And having very little left, he decided to follow a dream of traveling around the country as a pilgrim of consciousness and writing about his travels. He bought an old VW bus and packed up his gear and he was ready to roll. He looked at a map and he saw that the super highways and roads were indicated in red. The prospect of tourist attractions and truck stops didn't go with his dream. So he looked at the map again and he saw there were also blue highways, which are lesser known routes that promised more color and adventure. While the end of his job and his marriage caused a great deal of sorrow and upheaval, he put his whole heart into the journey and decided to write a book about it. And he called it Blue Highways. It made 34 weeks on the New York Times bestseller list. So his loss became a new and better beginning. I'm thinking of the many people who endured losses last year. And Losses of their life, loss of health, loss of jobs, losses of businesses, losses of opportunities, and losses of loved ones. When we come to endings of things that are precious to us, we may feel engulfed in darkness, but God is right there with us to shine away the darkness of fear and disappointment, sorrow and loneliness, and to light the way to a new and better beginning. So all of us are on a journey through this lifetime, just like the children of Israel, who went on a journey from Egypt to the Promised Land. The journey took 40 years, and metaphysically, the number 40 is a number that symbolizes completion. Their journey might be symbolic of a whole lifetime, or possibly a series of lifetimes, or one stage of a lifetime. The Israelites left Egypt because God sent them a leader who inspired them with the possibility of a better life. They were slaves in Egypt, and the Pharaoh had ordered all the male infants born to Jewish women to be killed at birth. So the Israelites had food and clothing and the bare necessities of life in Egypt, but the inner self, the divine self, wants more than that. It wants to express through us in a more expansive way. So the story says that God sent Moses, who was a Jew, but who grew up in the royal courts of Egypt to lead them out of slavery. After a series of calamities visited on the Egyptians, the Pharaoh reluctantly agreed to let the Israelites go. But then he changed his mind and sent his armies to pursue and kill them. They came to what they thought was the end of the journey at the Red Sea. They couldn't go forward without being drowned, and the Egyptians were about to annihilate them from behind. 
Just when it looked like all was lost, the Red Sea parted and allowed them to cross on dry, dry land. And the waters closed in behind them, drowning the Egyptians. That was an ending and a beginning, the beginning of a new experience of life. And what we experience of this opportunity to create a new and better life is what we make of it. If we're harboring fear and doubt and imagining difficulties and grumbling and quarreling among ourselves, that's what we may find in our new beginning because we manifest what we think about. But each time there was an end of food or water, God sent the Israelites what was needed. God brought water out of a rock and sent manna from heaven to feed them. They wandered and complained, when are we gonna get there? Where is our promised land? And it took them 40 years to find it. Finally, after 40 years, they arrived. Was it perfect? No. It was what they had envisioned. The land was possessed by fierce warlike tribes, and there were many trials and battles. There was more work to do and new things to learn. The end of something is often something we either dread or look forward to, something we like or dislike. And what we discover when we get there is the end is a new beginning and an opportunity for a new life. And finally, we come close to the end of our personal lifetime. And we look back and we say, what was that all about? And what it's all about is transformation. We're not the same people who began the journey. We've learned and grown and gained wisdom and understanding. And hopefully, we've awakened who we are as spiritual beings. And all the struggles and battles that are described in the Bible are our struggles to let go of old ways of being, old ideas and old beliefs, so that we have a more expanded awareness. But the transformation doesn't occur when we arrive at a certain destination. It occurs while we're taking the journey. We go through many endings and beginnings on our journey of life, and we learn from all of them. And the Bible has messages for us about how to make the most of them. For example, the Exodus story helps us to see that what's, what benefited us and even saved us in one stage of life can later restrict us if we hold on to the same beliefs and attitudes and ways of thinking and behaving. The Jews went to Egypt original, originally because there was a famine in Israel and they were starving. So Egypt was a godsend at one point in their history, but 400 years later, it enslaved them and took away their freedom. Similarly, when we are children, we form beliefs and attitudes and ways of behaving that serve us as children. But years after, in adulthood, these same patterns may limit us and keep us from being free and successful. They restrict us and keep us in bondage. And we have to leave them behind to live effectively in the present. And it is in changing our beliefs and our behavior that we find transformation and freedom. We actually have to get up and move out of those old behavior patterns and leave them behind. We don't like endings very well when something that is safe or comfortable or precious to us. 
But in moving on, we have the opportunity to be transformed. So transform transitions are times of rapid growth and soul unfoldment. The Exodus story has many messages about the nature of transformation. For example, Moses was chosen as the leader of the Exodus. The name Moses comes from a verb mosh, that means to draw out. In leaving old states of consciousness and old ways of being behind, we draw out our real self, the divine self that is capable of living a more expanded and free life. That's why things often come to an end because we cling to people, places, and things that we believe are necessary for us, for our very existence and for our identity. And we are deluded. Our existence and our identity depend on God and God consciousness, looking to God as our source of everything we need. So we're limited by illusions, and only illusions can limit us. Our personal self of who we are is our personality. When we identify with our personal self, we don't feel adequate. We don't feel capable of making changes that would free us. We feel adequate when we identify with our spiritual self. In this story, God tells Moses God's true name. Moses had asked the question, whom should I say sent me to do this? And God said, tell them that I am that I am has sent me to you. As God's son, Moses is the I am of I am that I am. So revealed in this story is our spiritual name, which is I am. And we can affirm I am to build our confidence and capability to take on new ways of being and doing things. For example, we can affirm I am confident, I am competent, I am capable, I am a leader. I'm willing to be transformed. And this helps us to feel adequate, to take on new roles in life and advance. In a transformation, something is either taken away or left behind. So we can discover that we're not dependent on it. We're not dependent on anything but God for our existence and our identity. And the name I am frees us. We're no longer enslaved to limiting beliefs and we can live a more expanded life. Endings can be difficult and scary and it's comforting to know that each ending is in truth a new beginning and an opportunity for transformation and emergence of the true self, the divine self. It's also interesting that sometimes we inadvertently trigger new beginnings for ourselves and for others without really meaning to. This is another message from the Exodus story. Moses made a mistake. He had a comfortable existence in the royal palace as the adopted son of the Pharaoh's daughter. He did know, however, that he was a Jew. And one day he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew slave and he became enraged and killed the, the Egyptian. He thought no one saw him, but someone did witness it and told the Pharaoh. So Moses became a fugitive. He had to leave his comfortable life in Egypt. He went to Midian and became a shepherd. And there he encountered God in the burning bush. 
and God told him to lead the Jews out of Egypt. God didn't choose someone for this mission who was pure and perfect. Moses was someone who needed to transform and awaken to who he really was. He was a man without a country and without a mission, and God gave him both. Sometimes things we've loved and valued come to an end because we make a mistake. And we berate ourselves and feel remorseful for years afterward. The Exodus story tells us that God can take our worst mistakes and use them for growth and good. It isn't the burdens of today that drive us mad. It's often regret over the yesterday's mistakes that keep us from moving forward in life. The Exodus story tells us that it, it presents us with an opportunity to grow into the people we're meant to be. These endings happen for the sake of transformation. Moses became a leader and the Israelites were transformed from a tribe of nomadic refugees to a nation with an identity, a covenant, and a mission, all because Moses made a mistake. So think about that and let the past go and trust God to guide you now. Things come to an end to break us out of old dependencies all ways of thinking and being. They come to an end because our real self, our divine self, wants to express more completely through each one of us. These are all ideas from a book that was written by Robert Brummett, who is a unity minister, and it's titled Finding Yourself in Transition. It's a wonderful book. And if you like what you heard today, you can purchase this book at Unity, the Unity Bookstore online. And it's also available through Amazon. This book is especially recommended when we find ourselves in a crisis of loss and endings. And we feel engulfed in fear and sorrow and disappointment, loneliness and regret. It helps us to remember that God is with us all the way through endings to beginnings. So now is the time in our service when we get still and reflect on the lesson and relate it to circumstances in our own lives. So I invite you to find a comfortable position in your chair preferably with your feet in contact with the floor, so you're grounded. And close your eyes, if that's comfortable. And focus on your heart, the intuitive, spiritual, loving location in your body. Take a few deep breaths, breathing in light, and breathing out darkness, breathing out stress and tension. Just let it all go. And tell yourself, I am one with God. Nothing can separate you from God. I invite God to live through me. I invite, I invite God to speak through me. I am as God created me. Nothing I have ever said or done can change my identity 
as a son or daughter of God. I am the I am of I am that I am. God is my I am. God is my strength. God is my peace. God is my guide. God is my source of all good. All the thought, I surrender all my judgments of myself and others. I invite the Holy Spirit to live through me, to love through me. to speak through me, to work through me. To be me. To show me the way to a new beginning. And now begin to come back to the outer world and feel your feet touching the floor. Feel your body in contact with your chair. Visualize the room around you. And when you're ready, slowly open your eyes. Thank you for going on this journey with me this morning. I hope you feel refreshed and ready to make your own journey with renewed courage and faith. Back to you, Mary. Thank you, Reverend Delora. And now we'll hear our meditation song. Can hear 
Thank you, Mike and Anandi, for that beautiful music. And now it's time for practicing generosity. Please take a moment to reflect on how prosperity is wanting to express through you now in this service. Thank you for your generous giving that supports our ministry and makes possible all the good work of Unity of Buffalo. You can continue to give through our mail-in love offerings to the church office or visit our website. Let's bless our gifts. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Freely I give and freely I receive. Thank you, God. And thank you, Reverend Delora, for a beautiful lesson on new beginnings. We bless these gifts and we see them pressed down, shaken together, heaped up, running over, and returned to every giver. Thank you, God. Amen. Our transformational opportunities this week include a new discussion group being led by the extra special and amazing Lonnie Gibbs titled Navigating the Shift. This group will meet weekly for eight weeks on Zoom Thursdays at 4 p.m. And the first meeting will be a week from this Thursday, July 8th. You are welcome to attend one, two, or as many sessions as you would like. Each session will be an hour long and feature a video from Dr. Teresa Bullard, a noted physicist, talking about the great transformation we are all experiencing now. You can sign up through our website and the information is also available through our weekly email blasts. Thank you so much, Lonnie, for hosting this series. I'm sure it will be fascinating and intriguing. We have lots of other opportunities for connecting online and in person on our Peace Park, including yoga classes, qigong, support groups, and ongoing spiritual studies. Again, please check our website and the weekly emails. We are using the Unity Peace Park more now than ever. Our Unity Peace Park team will be meeting in person on the Peace Park this Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. to talk about plans for continuing to maintain and upgrade the park and future programming. And everyone is welcome to attend this meeting and share your ideas. Now, we're ready to close with the prayer for protection and the peace song. So let's pray the prayer for protection together and we'll include our I am statements after each line. The light of God surrounds us. I am light. The love of God enfolds us. I am love. The power of God protects us. I am power. The presence of God watches over us. I am presence. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Yeah. Uh -huh.